I'm Catherine O'Connor and welcome to TVI Marbella's Property Show. sunshine. In this episode of the property show from TBI Marbella, I'll be going to meet up with Sebastian and John T of Richard Lewis Interiors to see what the guys are up to there. I'll also be getting some great tips and advice from Miguel at VIP Homes. I'll also be going to visit one of the most haunted houses in Andalusia. And finally, I'll be catching up with the guys at Splash Pools, so a bit of banter, some trivia over their tea break. Looking forward to that one. So, Let's go and see what uh, Sebastian John T are up to at Richard Lewis Interiors. Well, I think it's always good to start with a, a client, maybe, um, for example, to go for a wallpaper. So we'd, we'd choose a, a wallpaper, something like that. It's, it's a new one that's come in, which is the lizard. This, I one, like which that. Is absolutely fantastic. Can you have a look? Could you yes, show yeah. yeah. With the, the client wanted it, um, a, mar, a very Marbella, a very bling bling bedroom. So we're just doing this on the back wall, the headboard wall. Is that what they sort of call, um, it's like a feature wall, is feature it? Feature wall, absolutely. So this is, it's quite bold, isn't it, to, to yeah, work around, it is. isn't it? But I think and that's what's nice about a wallpaper, because as in, uh, you know, in the past we've always you know, wallpapered every wall. We did, now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with a border. Mm. But um, now we just go for the one accent wall, so... Mm. so um, and this yeah, is very exciting. sort of in at the moment, as you said. It said. is, absolutely. We're going to go for just the one wall behind the headboard. And this, then we're going to add a headboard in the silver here, which will be amazing. So we're going to do a headboard and with some Swarovski crystal buttons. What's Swarovski crystal, crystal, crystal buttons? buttons. <laughs> so again, a little bit of bling bling. Okay, so that'll be right. good. So I'm going to do a really, um, and then we're going to have a nice, really nice crystal chandelier. Um, then I'm going to add some black fabrics into this all up again a little bit. And you say this is on, uh, like on the, the, the feature wall with the headboard. What's mm -hmm. going on the other walls? The other walls are in a, a pale grey. So what, similar to kind of one of these? Yes, okay. similar to this. Yeah, so, uh, and then we're going to add um, some nice silk curtains and some stripy foil. So it's going to look, it's going to look good. Do they have so We've been going, I've been going 10 years now, Richard Lewis Interiors. Um, so I've come to a stage where I want to do more and um, we've been looking at other premises to, ex you know, to move to bigger premises. But now we've realised everybody knows where we are here in Guadalmina. Um, so we thought, right, let's take, make the most of the space that we can acquire. So did you actually wait for the space to come up? Yes. And it's just yeah. out of time. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so in the next, next couple of months we've got our work cut out. Illegal build, bad construction, poor quality can deter potential buyers from coming here to Spain to either build a new construction or renovate one. Which is why I went to have a chat with Miguel at VIP Homes. Welcome to the property show on TVI Marbella. With me, Miguel Ruiz from VIP Homes. When you contract him, be careful not to cut the corners. Tips would be always to have a quotation, have everything on writing, have it on writing. Uh, confirm the correct materials that you know what you're getting uh, be sure that they have a building license be sure that the personnel is coming in to work at the place are assured have insurances have the social security and are legalized not 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 the so-called black market because if accidents happened or anything happened inspection happens then there's a real serious problem for the constructor but also for the client most important, the client is as responsible as everybody else. Today we're here with our architect and with our supervisor, quality supervisor, Philip. We're just checking up what the quality is being done, how the works are doing the job, and also the architect is supervising that the workers are doing the job correctly as our specification. Mainly we talk also about the architect service. An architect normally has to control and also measure out what do we exactly have to build. A lot of constructors just build and say, I have 30 years of experience, I know more than enough. No, an architect is sometimes more than 
just 30 years of experience. You have to make drawings, you have to make technical reports, you have to make calculations, and you have to make these, ap these um, applications towards the town hall. And uh, sometimes small constructors just avoid it because it's a cost. I have to pay for it, but I mean, uh, it's better. The quality is better in the end. Uh, have people that have the autonomous, have people that have the social security, have people that... that if, you, if you fall down here and oh. you die, me as constructor is responsible, but, but he as a client, he's as responsible as. I see. And you can go to jail. And we have to try to explain why we are different. In the last years have to be redone, rebuilt, because constructors, developers have not finished the job correctly. And we have to fix what everybody else or others have not done correctly. More than the look, it's, it's how we finish it. We let the client decide the tile, the tools and so on. But we try to take the best materials, the best quality. That's where we put importance. We let them, them decide on the type of fabric, or I don't care, blue, red, blue, what? But it has to be wet quality. Okay, sorry, I have to finish up after a meeting now. We have to finish up our job. So we'll see you next time. If you have any questions about construction, we can very sure be helpful and interact with you through Facebook in TVI Marbella. We'll be following VIP homes throughout the series um, as we watch them convert a one bedroom flat into a three bedroom. I wonder how they do that. Anyone fancy a tea break? I know I do. Let's go and see the boys at Splash Pools. I thought he was having a fit and a sniper dropped on him. Yeah. <laughs> the turbo pump on the spaceship main engine can drain the average family's wheel bulk in 25 seconds. Wow, amazing. Come <laughs> over the bridge and drive right to the far side for something like Lagos. Yeah, 12, 12 years. Yeah. But then you've got to come back, so yeah. it makes it 25 euros. And you have, you, and you can't pay on the bridge. You have to hire no, the, oh, no have toll. To, yeah, can't on that one. You've either got to have a zapper, which will automatically deduct it, or you've got to buy a card from a post office first before you go <laughs> on the bridge. <laughs> so, so therefore, no one's going to Portugal from Spain. I don't think they know themselves, really. That's like clean that one. Rather clean that one than that be, one. Got to be honest. Got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's got to be China, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? What is that? Isn't that's got to be China. Isn't there one? The public um, baths. Just How mad is that? What if you're in the middle and you want to get out? <laughs> Just wonder what. That's, the that's really high up there. I know. It's probably in um, Shanghai, not Shanghai, but Malaysia. There's one on top of the. Mm. Well, Nice, small. What is this? It's like four kilometres long and you can sail boats in it and things. Oh, that's in uh, South America. South America somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one in South America that's three kilometres long. Just Yeah. Oh, quite well. Yeah. Self cleaning from 3K. That's the way I think. Oh my god. Is that which way? No, it's got to be that way. That's that one in <laughs> South America. South, South America, America yeah. isn't it? Yeah, right next to the bridge. Because apparently you, the zoo's infested with sharks and things, isn't it? Uh -huh. So um, they've got catamarans and all sorts. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's about is it two kilometres deep or something. Not deep. No. No, it's three, three kilometres. Deep. Three kilometres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's twenty. That's the Pacific. There's no one. There's no one. It's three 20. kilometres wide, isn't it? I think, and <laughs> twenty or fifteen long or something like that. And it's a, bit, it's a really deep section where you can dive in. Wow. Well, like I wonder where that is. <laughs> is that the Playboy Club on the top of um, Vegas, by the chance? Oh yeah. You can just dream of it. I like that one. You imagine the fun that could be had. If I was there, it's because I'd have the money to be there, so yes, it would be fun. <laughs> you wouldn't have to worry about cleaning it. At the moment, yeah, if I was there, I'd probably be cleaning it, or changing the pump or something. Nothing Veronica would be very good. Yeah. Yeah. If we were there, we'd be changing the pump or something in the pump room. <laughs> can you say... 
was the first ocean liner ever to have a swim? No idea. Go on, enlighten me. Good question, Paul, but I don't know the answer. We'll find out at the end of the show. Now, I ain't afraid of no ghost, but others in Malaga may beg to differ. Ask anybody who was born or has lived for many years in Malaga and they'll tell you the stories of the haunted house, Casa and Cantada. Many stories of horror, myths, legends. We went to have a look. Hello and welcome to the property show on TVI Marbella with me, Catherine O'Connor, and my accomplice, Scooby Dooby Doo, aka Dagny. We're here in the courtyard of the most haunted house in Andalusia, Gotillo Hado. All kinds of paranormal activity have been recorded here. Legend has it this house has many, many mysteries, myths, macabre stories to tell. Let's have a look around. Hi, so we're now inside the, um, the house. This would once have been a grand house. Um, the family that owned this house, who built this house, had, had big wealth. They, um, they owned all the land around. We can see Malaga Airport today, but when they bought this house, when they built this house, it was, it was their land. The Herodaria family, after they built this house in around 1820, the family went on to make a vast fortune. They became one of the most influential and powerful families in Spain. So why is this the most haunted house in Andalusia, and if not, one of the most haunted houses in the whole of Spain? Legend has it that below this house is a labyrinth of tunnels. So what happened down there? What happened in those tunnels? Well, tales, locals will tell you. Teenage girls went missing, torture, death. One of the stories is of a young, young boy who he fell into a hole and it led into a labyrinth of tunnels. As he stumbled around, he came across rooms with signs of black magic and machines and of torture and the bones of young girls. One night, a group of teenagers decided to come into the house and set up a Ouija board said the results are as follows. Firstly, they were contacted by a young girl. She said her name was Elena. Then, she spelt out, murdered. After that, she spelt out, lots of pain. After that, other girls. And after that, she told them that they were under the patio. But on the way out, they saw a light hovering above the patio. What we do know for certain is between the years 1890 and 1920, five bodies of young women were washed up in the local river. There's another tale. Um, a digger, a construction digger, fell through, again, a massive tunnel. In a picture of the original structure, we can see a section at the rear now removed. Note how straight the back edge is. And now note how deep the excavations and the underpinning are. In this shot, ignore the ghost, the front gate post, here, was the edge of the front patio. But now, it too has been excavated and concreted in. Also, it's the only place on the site where no flowers grow.
my time here is almost up. I'm surprised I had access to what is and what was a beautiful house. Um, whatever happened down below, there are stories, there are myths, there are tales. The house is still here. That was quite scary, it's quite strange. We didn't see anything, any people in windows, we didn't see any apparitions, but a door did slam when it wasn't supposed to. There were no doors in the house's slam, they've all been taken away. <laughs> so, um, who knows? Anyway, over to the property news. A recent survey by the post office in the UK says that a third of Britons under the age of 34 want to leave. These findings are supported by, the, by Spain's National Institute of Statistics, which reports that last year, between January and September, over 14,500 new foreign residents registered to live in Spain. The vast majority came from the EU countries. Don't forget, these are only the people that bothered to register. Many, many more didn't. Staying with an article from the Daily Mail, the Spanish government estimates that there are 700,000 empty properties in Spain at the moment. 400,000 of these are here along the coast. Many properties that expats have bought have seen their value fall by as much as 50%, and still many are unsold. So, is Vladimir Putin really moving to Marbella? Who knows? According to the website Benitatis, the Russian Prime Minister is currently negotiating buying a property on the exclusive development of La Zagaleta. The residents of La Zagaleta have the chance to say yes or no to new residents. Names that the committee have rejected in the past include Julio Inglésas, um, Shakira and also David Beckham. However, Hugh Grant apparently allegedly was accepted as a resident. So that was my news brought to you by TVI Marbella. Let's go over to see Sebastian John's here at Richard Lewis and see what they're up to. Changes afoot. So um, to for eight weeks, Eight weeks to do the transformation, like weeks until we open, so, so it's going to oh, be a big transformation from interior, just interior shop to coffee bar and come wine bar, it's going to be, oh, and oh, also we're going to add a terrace into the, you can go outside, outside, yeah. So, so basically the furniture moves upstairs, yes, and the coffee and the beer and the wine moves in here, in here with accessories, gifts, and also we're going to open up downstairs so on the, the lower floor. So you've got the space where the seamstress is? Yes, yeah. What will be so down there? It's going to be, we're, we're actually bringing in a lot of nice products, really different what you can't get here in Spain. So um, really quirky things, gifts, um, really nice gift cards, wrapping papers. And we're also going to put in a small deli area. The nice serving with um, mm. the ladder. Those are traditional ones, the little moving ladder. They move like they do in the libraries and things yeah. like that. Excellent. <laughs> pop, 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 I, pop, I found pop, this sauce. Thing. Yeah, what was it? It's, it's 1,400 times hotter than Tabasco. It's actually not a sauce, it's an extract. You're only supposed to use a tiny drop of it. Mm. And, and to sell this, you actually have to have a disclaimer signed to say that the, the purchaser has got no claims against the retailer and the manufacturer. So it's going to it's going to be a nice, really nice project. And what, what, where did the name Richard Lewis come from? Because if, forgive me, I thought you might be a Richard, he might be the Lewis. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm John to Richard Lewis. Well, I'm John to Richard Lewis Healy, so I took out um, Richard Lewis. I've, since I was at school, I wanted to, to call it Richard Lewis. I wanted Richard Lewis interior, so I, I chose that when I was like this. When I was a little nipper, so um, so yeah, <laughs> so um, so yeah, Richard Lewis. I'm actually Warsaw North, but I say that to people and they don't know where Warsaw is. Don't know. They think I'm Polish. They think you're what? Polish. Do they? Gosh. Well, that's all for the property show this time on TVR Marbella. We look forward to seeing you next time. 
Um, oh, by the way, answer the question earlier. Which cruise liner had the very first swimming pool? The Titanic. See you next time. Bye.